Good day and welcome to Open Studio. My name is Eleanor Lowe. As part of Cape Town Television's mentorship program, we are offering a conversation called Elevate, where we elevate, we celebrate, we share stories about colored leaders creating change and making a difference in South Africa. My guest today is Yodia Samson, popularly known as Harbour. <laughs> You know, it's like whenever I hear the name Iodia, someone else says Harbour. <laughs> and today, I think really you should tell people a little bit more of who Iodia Samson is. I know you're a well-known actress, but you're also a motivational speaker, and there's so much more to you. And we're going to delve more into that as we go along in the show. Iodia, tell me a bit about yourself. Where do you come from? Man, uh, thank you first of all for having me thank here you today. For coming. Um, I'm a girlie from the flats. I am born and bred in Lavendale Steenberg Retreat okay. area. Yeah. Um, my formative years, I was born, when I was born, I was in retreat. My mother was in the back of the And we were part of the very first families to get um, a flat in Lavendale when it was newly built in 1970 or 1972, oh. where many of the families were forced to move yes. from various areas. Mm. So we were from the first to two, number two, Frieda Court. Wow. That is my roots. And then I was till the till about um, nine years old yeah. and then my father yeah. and then we uh, got a house in he had a house built for us in nectar road off yes. allenby drive in retreat yeah. and the family our family home is still there still and then time. yeah i was there till about uh, 14 till i went to heathfield high yes and then my my, old school. My, yes <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, my father accepted a job um a New World Foundation in Lavendale, the organization was just started, I think that was 80, 82, I think. Mm. And we then um, moved to the premises and my father was a founder member of New World Foundation. Oh, what and was your father's name? Clifford Sampson, okay. uh, Brook Cliffy van Lavendale. <laughs> And um, he then was part of the community work and he was a life minister of the Sphirika, the Sending Care yes. next door. And yes. he was a life minister there. So we moved back to, to, to Lavendale and lived on the premises of Newell Foundation till I was about matric. Yes. And then my parents took a, a post up to do community work um, in the Witzenberg Valley, Sirius, Koa Bokkerveld area. Yes. And then I moved, uh, I then stayed at various family friends in the How retreat area. How old were you then? I was about, uh, when daddy them, I was um, 18 that year because in my matric year, mm. but um, because of the riots, I had to do my matric year over because we were offered to you know to be promoted that year because mm. we didn't write exams so those yes years. so i we chose to in my standard nine year or my grade 11 year mm. not to be promoted so i did my matric when i was 19 years old wow. yes yes now from what i gather you were always involved in community work yes. and your family is that where your love for the community comes from yes it, it, it probably is and like like most young girls on the cape flats and parents did have money to send me to university mm. or for me to go and study further and also I didn't quite know what where you? and what I wanted to do mm. um, what happened was I um, ended up a week by Woolworths yes. <laughs> Woolworths Blue Root just opened and a friend of mine um, said that uh, you know they were taking casuals because her mother worked at head office Woolworths yeah. and I went there yeah, okay I'll go and work for Woolworths and mommy so happy when yeah. I come off my op week <laughs> by Woolworths you know how good it is yes and a like 33% discount to be cost oh my <laughs> and I would be at Woolworths during the day and I just looked at the situation and thought I wanted more mm. from life but what more was I didn't know as a yes. young girl growing up in mm. the flats what more needed I also didn't know and so I always say from pure boredom I ended up me and my best friend joining this drama group at Newell Foundation and fortunate for us the guy that started the drama group was an exchange student um, Johann Voisman, a German exchange okay. student at New World Foundation and he wanted to do a drama group it was the mid 80s as the country is burning yes. and the revolution they're talking about revolution 
and he wanted to do a little community play to portray what we then called back then protest theatre. That's right, I remember. And this little play ended up, Lavendel Blues, ended up at the Baxter Theatre for a two-week run. Mm -hmm. And there I was, haven't acted a day in my life, and um, they, they, he introduced a formidable community theatre development um, director um, called Itumeleng Waleuleri. Okay. And he did for us no deal, so passes gefat, and took this girl, this young girl, and turned her into an actress. Yeah. And I'm like, I know I like this <laughs> acting business. Is that how you started your acting? <laughs> yes, your acting with career. this little community play yeah. that ended up at the Baxter for yeah. two weeks. Did you go and study acting? This is the thing. This little community play, Lavendel Blues, was such a huge success at mm. the end of the day that the Baxter Theatre gives us a full run. Mm. And it was sold out that they ended up giving us a space at the, in the concert hall, the biggest wow. venue at the, at, for eight weeks. And there I am um, performing every night. Mm. And during the day, we are doing, um, I'm working at Woolworths. And um, what happens is one evening after the show, an old grey white lady came and asked, inquired about my education level and mm -hmm. who I am and all that. And it turns out to be the Professor Mavis Taylor of oh UCT my. Drama School. And I'm like, a person can study acting. You know it's Mavis Taylor. No, I'm like, can a person study acting? Yes. I didn't even know you could go and study acting. Yes. And the rest, like they say, is his, uh, history. Um, uh, uh, she then offered me a bursary to go and study at the prestigious UCT Drama mm -hmm. School of, after I've just done this little one community yeah. play. It was really like, it was a the mind boggle when I walked into UCT mm. Drama School and the, the, the caliber of people mm -hmm. and people that just wanted to be actors. Yes. And I was grouped into this group did you say that you were just a natural actor? It turns out, <laughs> <laughs> turns out I could act. As we all now know, I'm going to take a short break, and as we all now know, she is quite a natural <laughs> actor. When we return, I almost said, Khawa, Yoda's going to tell us more about her journey as she went to go and do a bit of psychology as well. We're going to take a short break, and once we're back, we're back with Yoda Samson. Thank you for watching. Keep watching CTV. back welcome to elevate and we're having our conversation today with Eodia Sampson Eodia you went to study psychology from acting to psychology why psychology man one of the things that that probably prompted me um, to go into psychology was the fact that um, I after after varsity I ended up um, doing road shows for, mm. for, for KPAB in the back in the days, which is now Artscape. We used to do the, uh, uh, the set work, matrix set work and okay. the poetry programs and all that. And then, so then someone said, no, but I must get myself an agent. Mm. And this is like a year and a half into me being professional. So I get myself an agent. And before I know it, I get cast as Chava yes. in this TV series yes. that I didn't bargain for. Yeah. I, I don't know what I was thinking, but I, I always said nobody could prepare me for the chaos that erupted around being in a prominent TV series. Mm -hmm. And I always said um, um, in the 1996 when it happened, um, social media wasn't around. Mm -hmm. um, the soapy industry hasn't started yet. Mm -hmm. The concept of celebrity wasn't uh, wasn't wasn't it wasn't, it wasn't a concept. Mm. It's only only in the two thousands that that it's kind of we were still listening to radio. Remember? Yes, stories. And the country was just changing, and suddenly, my whole community saw a person of oh color my, on TV. I remember. Um, and and my character was of a character that the story was so close to the community that mm. everybody felt. They had to nurture me, mm. and they had to <laughs> like hold me for 13 so weeks. So they could relate now to yes, you. Yes, and oh my goodness, did I have to walk into shopping malls and, be, and this, my character's name was Chava. Yes. 
Hava, you must tell your father that that Danny boy is is watching you while you're bathing. He's looking through the window. And they were referring to you to as, as my role. Yes, as my character. Mm -hmm. And I. I'd, I would go and just do my shopping and there would be 20 people around my trolley mm. and trying to talk to me, trying to touch me. Wasn't that overwhelming? It was overwhelming and like I said, nobody could prepare me for mm. that chaos. And so much so that for a whole year and a half, two years afterwards, mm. I suffered high levels of anxiety. I got crowd phobia because I mm. knew I couldn't go anywhere. Mm. One of the, 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 one of the pinnacles of me getting absolute a panic attack mm. was um, a, 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 I, I was at a, a, we were doing a road show and people knew that Chava was inside and from just a few people outside the venue mm. to thousands rocking up and my director not knowing what to do because they were trying to get in and they were going to break down the door of the wall and they oh. he sent me into this crowd oh my. of thousands and i ended up on a car just standing there well, hello i didn't yes. know what to do and literally having kids pull at my clothing oh and i my. thought i was going to mm. get stripped naked in this crowd mm. of people how did you manage yourself that day? That day, well, that was the catalyst of mm. me becoming so anxious to mm. go. Um, a simple thing like going to visit my cousins yes. in M Mitchell's Plain for a, a anim party or a du party. 500 people would be outside sure. knowing that Hav is inside. Mm. And what happened eventually, I, 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 I then withdrew myself from community. Mm. But I loved people. Mm. So one morning, I literally out of frustration, got in my car, drove to the nearest high school. The principal almost fell off his, ta off his chair when I walked in there the Monday morning and said, Sir, I want to speak to your matriculants. They see me on TV. Yes. I'm a girly from the flats. I know what it is to have dreams and aspirations and nothing in your world is supporting just wanting more. I just want to tell them my story. Yes. That morning, my motivational talk started. Wow. And over the years, I was asked to come and do more motivational talks. Yes. The principal would say, can't I do something more than a motivational mm. talk? So I would start doing taking acting workshops, making it into life skill workshops. Oh, can you use that as a modality? Yes, and teaching? that evolved in me working with youth. Um, and then the teacher would be there, and the teacher would ask me, can't I come to, and talk to their women's groups, their yes. book clubs? And so my talks and my workshops evolved just naturally over, over years of being you know, on TV and getting invited to these things. And then I thought I needed something concrete mm. because I was dealing with young people. I That's see. how I ended no. up then going to study uh, psychology. psychology. I wanted to ask you because you mentioned that you had a panic attack yes. and you had anxiety. anxiety. How did you know it is anxiety? Well, uh, uh, the, the overwhelming feeling of your chest closing and you yes. can't breathe. Were those the signs you yes, had? Yes, and you can't breathe or heart palpitations mm. in the... In just the thought of being invited to uh, somewhere where you know it's going to be a huge massive crowd mm. and in the old days, we didn't have what's called the celebrity. They have handlers now, yes. and people that That's manage asked, well, them. There's someone and to manage you. you. You just had to rock up and yeah. hope people there'll be a holding space for you, you and, and not you having to walk through crowds yes. where people touch you. Mm. Just a simple thing: going to the mall. One yeah. day, I walked into the mall at an arbitrary eight o'clock, half past eight in the morning on a Thursday. Like a normal thing to go to, to go the shop. shopping. Mm. The whole mall shut down to run. Oh. People were running out of sh the, the shop assistants yes. were running out of to see me to touch me to yeah. and the security had to yeah. through the back doors to try and Take get me and, and and those were the things that created mm. high levels mm. of anxiety. Did you feel that while you were doing the speaking and um, going to schools that it assisted you with your healing process, or what modality did you personally use to help you? To heal? I think over the years, one of the things I withdrew a bit from super fame mm. because my, my youngest son was about three years old. Um, I had him at Varsity. Oh, that's the Anna. I could have fallen. So he was about three years old when this super fame. And then I 
realized and I saw how it affected him. Because mm. he'd be in the trolley and there'd be 20 people going, are you also going to be an actor like your mommy? And he's shame. He, 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 and years later, we had to deal with the repercussions of him growing up oh. with a famous mom. Mm. And when, when I eventually got married, because I got, Cameron was about a year and a half old when I met my husband. Mm. And I got married and we had two more children. I made the conscious decision that I would do enough work um, in the media and be in the media to be able to give me a, a, a media profile, mm -hmm. to get invited to places to speak, oh. but not super fame. Like I yes. would, um, 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 I actually said no to a few times to Siva Nalan and yes. to Isi Dingo and all the big soapies. But you managed to maintain a balance. Yes, and just and did enough a, a TV series here or a part yeah. in a movie there or a sh TV sh a, yeah. a, a stage production there. Yeah. Just enough to keep me in the media yes. so that I can go and speak and, and do my work. That's how you were able to manage it. Yes. Absolutely wonderful. There's something that we're going to discuss now. Um, I think it's trauma release exercises, exercises that one could do. We're going to take a short break, and once we come back, Yoda Samson is going to exp explain to us what is trauma release exercises. A very long word. We'll be back shortly. Welcome back to Elevate, and we're having a wonderful conversation with Eoda Sampson. Now, everyone knows Eoda as being an actress, but you're also a motivational speaker. But there's much more to you. You're also a wellness practitioner. Now, when I looked at the credits earlier, I thought, this is a lot to say. <laughs> and the one thing that stood out is this exercises that you offer um, in our communities, mm. in the Cape Flats areas, or wherever in South Africa, people are suffering from high levels of stress. Mm. This can be due to the way we live, and then another thing, the way we eat. Yes. I think uh, one of the things, and, and me having high levels of anxiety, mm. and, and just generally, I've always been an anxious person. Mm. And for years, and through my process, I had to discover my mom might, might have been undiagnosed bipolar. Oh. And uh, yeah, being her only daughter, I grew up in an environment where I didn't quite know what I'm going to get from day to day. Okay. So that caused high levels of, just generally high okay. levels of anxiety. The fame stuff on top of that then exacerbated oh my. my anxiousness. And in searching for ways to deal with my, my, my anxiety, I came upon a very fairly new modality and I'm talking about new in terms of about 20 years, 25 years, um, an American a um, modality called tension and trauma release exercises. Okay, and TRE. what is that? TRE. Mm. And um, a, 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 a practitioner, um, um, uh, Rajesh, um, uh, she's in Constantia, um, Ingrid Rajesh, she um, brought this modality to South, South Africa. Africa. And it's, it's based on a, a Dr. David Baselli. Okay. Dr. David Baselli was a, uh, a priest and a, a medical doctor okay. that throughout the, the 80s traveled to war-torn countries. Okay. And in his travels as a medical practitioner in these war-torn countries, he noticed and observed certain things. And one of the things that was evident in all the trauma patients that he, that he, that, that he, he, he worked with and trauma that he experienced himself first and being in 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 war zones mm. is the shaking mechanism when people are highly stressed, stressed. and highly have been in a traumatic mm. then you end up shaking and mm. people say yes. <laughs> <laughs> and he was fascinated by that process and um, through trial and error he started researching why do people shake mm. and there was a few incidences that made him think about it more. Uh, a long story short, he ended up 
realizing that this shaking mechanism that the body naturally does in high stress situation mm -hmm. is the body's natural mechanism to get rid of high levels of cortisone oh and my. adrenaline that mm. surge the body into a fight or flight mode mm. when you are stressed mm. or when you feel your body is in danger or where you are, are, are uh, in, a, in a stressed or a, a, a trauma or fight mode. In a fright, mm. your body surge with adrenaline and cortisol oh to get you ready to fight yes. or to fr mm. flight or to freeze. Yes. Sometimes you freeze yes. and you block out. Yes. And that is the body's protective mechanism. Okay. So when you shake, the body then naturally releases that, that um, takes it out of the blood system, mm. um, the cortisone and adrenaline. Saeed, with his colleagues, then developed six yoga-ish kinds of okay. exercises to switch on this natural mechanism to start shaking. Yeah. And then you literally lie on your back and you tremor. The whole body just tremors naturally. Yes. It just shakes. And that causes this calmness in the whole okay. body mechanism, in your muscles, because our muscles mm. remember the traumas yeah, that we went that's through. That's why, that's why we have ba lower back pain, mm. migraines, mm. headaches. It's all sitting in the body. The memory of the yes. traumas sit in our bodies. Yeah. And um, when I then found this modality, it was the first time I was calm like you can't believe. Yeah. I had deep night's rest so that and sleep, you in that process, mm. yes. And, and, and Ingrid then realized that I'm busy in the community and she obviously needs this modality to be done more in communities mm. and in South Africa. Mm. And she then suggests, why don't I become a practitioner? Oh, and great. that's how I ended up mm. um, becoming a practitioner mm. of the modality. Mm. And I was doing stress management workshops in Delft, um, with a woman that volunteer for SAPS, mm. uh, South African Police Services. Those are uh, high crime areas yes. as well. And so a lot of these women, um, they, they use unemployed women to volunteer in the, the Delft police station. And so they receive all the kinds of, you know, the traumas that yes. they have to deal and they have to place kids that were mm. raped and abused. And so they, they work so what's called caregivers fatigue. Yes. When you work in high stress areas, mm. like teachers have caregivers yes. fatigue, nurses. nurses, and they don't often look after, after themselves. themselves. So mm. I do a caregivers fatigue workshop mm. around that and I offer TRE. Mm. And that's how I ended up starting to um, um, go around. Yeah. We are now speaking in Lavendale. Yeah. One of the biggest thing as a trauma practitioner mm. now, we as South Africans across the board suffer what's called post-traumatic stress, stress disorder, disorder, PTSD. Yes. Not just because of the violence mm. in our communities, but because of apartheid. Yes. We, and, and that's why the high levels, because then from tension and trauma release and TRE as a practitioner, I've become an addiction specialist because... What is an addiction specialist? We know what addiction is, but... I specialize in why people are addicted. Mm. I specialize in it. Mm. And it's because of traumas, unresolved traumas. So the body is so heightened because of the trauma yeah. and addiction has nothing to do with drugs. Drugs mm. has always been since the beginning of mankind where they rolled up grass and realized it's giving them a high. Yes. We were smoking. Mm. But why has addiction gone off the charts in the, in the last couple of years yeah. like I've seen in communities. Before we wrap up there's something else. Um, you had a bit of a challenge yes. with your weight at one stage yes. and you discovered that you were insulin resistant. Insul insulin resistant. And you're working with Dr. Tim Noakes. Yes. Now in our country we have I say wounds from the past. Yes. Our eating habits. Yes. The way we're living. Yes. Does it affect who we are as people in this of country? Of course. And one of the things that I realized I did with mm. the high stress and high levels of anxiety, mm. one of my coping methods was comfort eating. Yes. And, and I would, uh, you know, people say, oh, no, I'm a chocolate and oh, no, I yeah. love my luxuries. Yeah. But I got to a stage a few years ago, and I'm, I'm turning 50. I'm from a new generation of women. A drama in Oma. And, and so about four or five years ago, even six years ago, 
things started falling apart. Mm -hmm. My weight, and I'm, because I'm in the media, yeah. I'm on TV, and um, I was at the time in a play yeah. with a beautiful and gorgeous um, mm. Diane Lawrence and Paula yeah. Van Sievenalan. Yeah. And when you look like a minibus taxi you next to, to her. You compare yourself. And so I was on gym every day yeah. doing the low fat and the, the thing. And my weight wasn't shifting. Yeah. Suddenly I found that out that I was insulin, insulin resistant, resistant, which means I can't process high amounts of carbs mm. and sugar. And this is what Professor Nooks in his Banting Revolution. And that changed your completely. life. Completely. And mm. I took that information, yeah. took it to communities, yeah. and I've been instrumental to cut out the processed foods, yeah. cut out your carbs, cut out your yeah. sugar. And I dear, thank you so yes. much. And I want to tell to all the viewers out there, Please look at this woman's Facebook page. Go on her website because she's going to school, she's going to communities to teach people how to eat healthy and how to live a healthy, balanced lifestyle. Thank you so much for um, watching Elevate. Thank you so much for joining us, Eoda Samson, and sharing your story with us. Thank you. Thank you.